Hi. Uh, well, my name's Glenn Cunnington. I, I must going to say, a very self-confessed film geek, and I've always been really interested in movies at a very young age. Probably got it from my dad, but I suddenly, well, for yet for when I hit my teenage years, kind of like the idea of actually making films. And when I was a teenager, there used to be tons of programs on where people used to make films on Super 8mm film. They usually like screen tests or basically short films where it usually involves uh, crude animation or stuff like that, or stop animation. And uh, there was this, I think back man about 1986, there was this uh, shop I discovered on Alfreton Road. And it actually sold uh, cine projectors and uh, Super 8 cameras. So I thought, oh, okay, I think I'm going to get one of them. I can't quite remember how much it was. I, I was about 17 at the time, and I bought this uh, Super 8 uh, cine camera. Uh, and that's basically how it started. The slight difference was with Super 8 cine camera, you had these uh, cartridges of film, which basically was lasted about three and a half minutes, which really is nothing now but there's something quite exciting basically of using that and getting getting it developed so the first thing i ever made was um a really crude film called the perils of simon anna jones which was kind of obviously i think the clues in the title my brother who was about 10 at the time played uh yeah, it happened to be called simon as well so not really much work on changing the name. He plays basically an Indiana Jones character. And we filmed this all around uh, Bullwood Hall Forest. This was with me, um, my friend, uh, Stephen Smith, who we was group mates, basically, who doesn't know each other for ages. So both of us, basically 17, filming at Bullwood Hall Forest at this, uh, in our little Indiana Jones rip-off. I think it, at the time I was... Checking up recently, I think it cost us about thirty-five pound eighty-seven pence to be precise. Uh, the film parts cartridges cost about four or five pounds, I think, at the time. So basically, I think we used four. So most of it went on filming, uh, and we actually um, we sent them off. They then late set for several days. They like uh, a photo processing. They come through back for your letterbox, and I spliced them up together. And I mean, this obviously we completed this short film of Simon and Jones, and it was quite good fun. We showed it to our family, and everyone seemed to love it. Uh, it was especially the, we did this one scene where Stephen also played the villain of the piece, and he kind of threw, threw a knife, and he, and it actually kind of hits almost hits Simon, but it like hits the, the tree. So all we actually did really was actually. We put the camera near Simon's face and then Stephen just pushed the knife in the tree. But the two separate shots was like Stephen was actually throwing the knife and we qu I quickly edited to that and it actually looked quite effective. And that was basically our um, first movie. Uh, between 1986 and 1993, we made uh, 39 short films. Uh they range from all sorts of kind of ones. We made um, we made a couple of horror films. Uh, my friend Stephen, who later started to write and direct his own films, he was kind of more into the Brian De Palma, Alfred Hitchcock kind of film. He liked suspense thrillers and things like Psycho and Vertigo. And uh, if you've seen Untouchables, Brian De Palma and Alfred Hitchcock are kind of quite similar. Or oh the kind of well, the department of it was Alfred Hitchcock to a certain extent but they are they're very good filler directors and Steven's films are always kind of quite dark he made a series of films uh, which I I, don't, I only appeared in one of them but I was always kind of the producer or had small roles and they was called Torso and he made about three or four of those it's kind of a bit like a, 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 a psycho kind of film I wrote and directed these a uh, set of films called Weird Demons about this demon watch what kind of actually uh, possesses people and I made three of those and they, they was really good fun it was quite dark, nasty and I was a big fan of Evil Dead 2 at the time so I made it as gory as possible they were, they were quite good fun uh, we made uh, 
I'm, we made a like quite a few comedies. I made a, a um a Ghostbusters kind of rip off called Spook Hunters, which featured Simon and his uh, best friend at school, Barry Wright, and they was kind of inept kind of Ghostbusters and. It was totally stupid. It was quite daft, but it was really good fun. And I asked, some, asked some random scenes of stop animation. Animation. And my other friend from school, Matthew uh, Grocott, he basically he kind of he, he was kind of the guy that was investigating. And we did a very funny parody of the chestburster scene from Alien, which was quite effective actually. Um, one of the most. I also made this film called Friends Till the End which is a kind of a bizarre version of War of the Roses about these two brothers who really hate each other and they basically keep doing evil practical jokes, kind of like Home Alone on acid, and then eventually end up killing each other, which was quite good fun. But I really like that. Um, Stephen as well, actually. He was actually a very big James Bond fan. And uh, we made seven James Bond films. Well, Simon's character is called James Blonde, so we didn't change it that much. And they was really good fun, but like I said they, they they I kind of directed the first one, but it was always Stevens one, so he actually uh, loved to do them ones. Uh, it was I mean the, the the last one one of the last ones we did, which was at, which was in nineteen ninety one of the James Bond thing. We made this one called Spymaster, and at the time that cost us two hundred and ten pound. Which thinking about it now, twenty four years ago, that was quite pricey really. Um, throughout those years we actually filmed we filmed in various different locations we, Bull Hall Park was always a good place to actually film because uh, you've actually just got fields you've got forests, you can get away with everything uh, East Midlands Airport, which was good uh, we filmed in Lincoln we doubled that as Paris for one of our James Bond films we filmed in some areas in uh, Queen's Medical Centre for one of these Bond films we did unfortunately halfway through filming we was kind of almost arrested as well uh, because actually uh, we was wouldn't have around with toy guns, and that 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 was back in 1991. And I think that might have kind of stopped him to go off. It was kind of like kids playing with guns, even though it was great from the film. I was starting to, I don't think like the idea of getting invested by for making a film, but it was the only time it ever happened. Um, we filmed at uh, Coxford uh, Air Base, which was good fun. Uh, Newark, uh, all areas around in in and out Nottingham Castle. Uh, not on the train station, uh, Wollerton Hall, we used uh, various different car parks as thriller scenes or action scenes. And um, one of the films we made, one of the James Bond films, uh, Stephen took the camera to Paris and uh, we actually, he just filmed some additional footage of Paris, which I eventually edited in later. Uh, th- speaking of editing, that was uh, probably my favourite thing I used to do. I, I had basically what is known as a dual eight movie edition editor which is basically real we consists of two reels on either side and a little screen so basically you just go you just run the film through there so you can actually see it shot for shot and then you actually just i can just take out the shot i don't like or take out a couple of frames to tighten up that scene cut it with a splicer then edit it back together again i think it was something quite exciting about doing that that's my favorite filmmaking process um you can, I think you can just make or break a film on it and then sort of messing around with real film is quite exciting to be perfectly honest so it kind of felt more professional I think the films um, I made that I was the most proud of I there was a film I made called Fellow Hoodlums which is uh, Stephen plays three um, crooks who intend to try and bomb this house but he actually plays all three characters and they've all got slightly different personalities. One's kind of like quite posh, one's a bit crazy, and one's a bit nasty. Um, and they're just based, all of this is just trying to break into this house. It's a bit of a comedy, but it was quite effective because we just did like really simple effects and it pulled off. It came off quite well. It's like um, you put the camera on the tripod near the door, Stephen will come out of the door. And then we'd keep, obviously stop the, stop the camera, then Stephen comes out the door again in a slightly different costume. It, it was a very simple effect. Like, we had a fight scenes where basically he's fighting one character, and then I would dress up the back of tend to be Stephen, and then you'd actually just film it vice versa. And to be honest, it's actually, considering it was about 1991, it looked quite effective at the time. I was very, very proud of that. And it was quite funny. And I think the one 
I enjoyed the most is a film I made called Widescreen, which my brother plays um, a very put upon director who is just basically he's got two prima donna of actors trying to he's trying to do this kind of filler and he's trying to direct it and they're just not listening to a word they're actually saying and they're just basically just like every time you film the shot the actor doesn't like that or doesn't like that and it's kind of slapstick it's kind of moments filmed in fast and I'm really proud of it and Simon my brother does really good performances like someone who's just getting very irate and getting very very angry um, but um, I think towards the mid 90s, uh, I think around about 1995, um, I think I was kind of slightly getting bored of doing what we was doing. I don't think it was going anywhere really. Uh, Stephen he wanted to make another one of these James Bond films, which was fine. Uh, but by the time we finished it, it's, well, we actually only filmed part of it. I looked at the footage and it's kind of like what was good, what was kind of quite good fun about four or five years ago, it just looks, doesn't look right now, it's just like, this looks like kids playing with guns now and it just didn't feel right. We'd made quite a few mature projects and funny projects or something slightly different and Simon tended to be a, an agent then, it just, and he was growing up, it was quite fun and cute with as a kid, it just didn't look right and I was kind of a bit bored of it after a while. And my friend Stephen, I think this race just grew apart as in, we had totally different tastes in films and this, that and the other. And uh, we just didn't really do anything and that was really the last time we did anything for some time. Uh, Stephen, I think Stephen by then, I bought a video camera, he was doing these really, we did a couple of these really stupid over the top comedies, which were fun, but they were kind of like um, going backwards really, because it was like dumbing down what we'd done previously. Um, and then, found about, I think it was about 2004, I discovered this um, shot what sold this uh, out-of-date Russian Super 8 film. And what it is, when it was developed, it basically gave the quality, It's it was black and white, it was grainy, it was rough, it looked like something from a Charles Chaplin, Noel Hardy kind of 1920s, 1930s silent movie, comedy, etc. So I wrote and directed this uh, film called The Curse of Ghosts, which I was really proud of and it's really good it's quite expensive I think at the time and that featured uh, my brother Stephen his son now he had a son then um, Simon played this character called Joshua Grind who's kind of a bizarre immortal kind of person and he's kind of hunting down this uh, pendant and it was really good and that really was the last thing I actually did I think it's like I said it just got to a point where things becoming a bit too expensive and also it's kind of like I was I was turning a bit too much into a film geek and I, like I had no um <laughs> personal life and then obviously things slightly altered different and then I obviously met Emily in 2006 and then obviously things altered considerably so basically I also still loved films but uh making them kind of kind of like fell by the wayside kind of thing and then a couple of years ago, um, uh, I was an advert on uh, our Exchange in Mark, and I uh, there was this guy called Ma- Matthew Elliott, and he was actually looking for a director. I thought, oh, sounds quite cool. So I replied to that. Um, we met up in a coffee shop near Christmas time uh, with uh, his brother Sean and uh, some guy called Jim. And we had this idea, I think it was called at the time, or well, they had written this film called A Very Bad Day, or a Bad Day, I can't remember what it's called now. And I uh, thought, oh, that sounds really cool, and they wanted me to direct it. I told them briefly what I'd done previously, I thought, oh, yeah, that sounds cool. So we, in that, I think in around about January, about the month later, we kind of filmed it. The part more well, percentage of it, unfortunately, it didn't kind of work out. Uh, it was eventually called a state a state of being connected. It was a great idea about all these different connecting stories, but we just actually um, it, we just it, it it just didn't get finished, and it was a shame really. And then I can, we kind of lost contact with Jim, and and obviously I'm still briefly in contact with uh, Sean and Matthew. And then a bit uh, later, about, I might about a year or so after, I can't remember. It's a bit of a gap to be perfectly honest. Um, 
Matthew had this idea about this Andy Bullion kind of film called In Hindsight, which you said we'd like to direct, and I did. And that was a very successful uh, partnership, and it, it went really well. Didn't really have a script, but Matthew had a very, very detailed idea how he actually wanted it. And it turned out to be really good. Um, last time I checked, it was actually, we've got about approaching a thousand views on YouTube. Uh, it was shown in America. Um, we did an interview on the radio regarding it. We got on the local papers regarding it. So I was I was very proud of it. And Matthew was really, right. he was doing loads of writing and he said, we would like to direct this, we'd like to direct that, I'm going to do this, and then, like, then he wants to direct this. So it was kind of quite, it was kind of like the old days, but it was kind of more focused. And the good thing about this was, is all my films were silent, and it was a bit of a chance to write scripts and work with dialogue, etc., work with um, a new range of actors. So it was really good. And in between, obviously, Matthew has wrote loads of stuff he's done a really good film called intermission which is really good he's currently working on something now and um he wanted to know what i was going to direct next and i uh, i've always been a kind of a really big fan of the original like rod sterling twilight zones episodes from 1959 to about 1965 which basically is about 20 usually 20 minutes and it's kind of a sting on the tape sting at the end of the tail or a catch at the end and I kind of like the idea after making this anti-bullying film called In Hindsight, which is quite dark and serious, I found it something more comical. So I came up with this idea of um, the Trembling Terror in High Gear, which is basically a road trip gone wrong, in so many words. It's about uh, a guy, two friends, who's given his, uh, his uh, friend a lift to university, but unfortunately, uh, they seem to be in a kind of a haunted, spooky car with a clown. And hopefully there's kind of loads of good gags in there. And I in loads of film references, because I'm constantly trying to uh, drop in as many film references and things as possible. So I am a bit sober when it comes to stuff like that. So, um, and it turned out really well. I had a brilliant team behind me. Matthew was the star and the uh, producer. Um, Raf, who's played the crap played the clown and did an absolutely amazing job of co-editing the film with uh, Matt and doing obviously the visual effects which are actually amazing you wouldn't know the visual effects it's like right ruin it they're seamless and Sean Hardy who does a brilliant job as kind of a deadpan sidekick to uh, Matthew's uh, character and that uh, turned out really well uh, we released it a couple of weeks ago on YouTube. We, we built it up quite nicely. And I think the last time we looked on that, I had, had, had quite a few good positive responses. And um, I think about 170 views on YouTube, which was great. And again, that was all down to, um, you could say it sounds really cringeworthy, but Matthew kind of believing in me and like promoting my projects and that. Uh, and at the moment, we're obviously, we're working on a few new projects. I'm writing something. Um, Matt's got several good ideas in the line so it's a combination of us both writing and us both directing and stuff so going forward this is the future of horror films